I think we've been deprived of a lot more than flying cars and Mars colonies. I think civilization is currently burdened by a debilitating pessimism, not just prophecies of doom, because they've always existed. There's something deeper. The term technological fix has become as pejorative as Luddite used to be. The aspiration for technological solutions is now widely regarded as naive, a fantasy that ignores the inevitability of missteps and side effects. And that naivety is labeled optimism, because optimism has come to mean something like the assumption that the best will happen, or probably will, and pessimism that the worst will. They're both false as general principles. No one adopts them. They're irrationalities that people accuse each other of having. Everyone classifies themselves as somewhere in the middle, perhaps admitting to a slight bias in one direction or the other, and therefore admitting to slight irrationality. In fact, both ends of the spectrum and the middle are predictions of success or failure, maybe probabilistic, derived only from an attitude or a, a principle, not from explanations of why reality should match them. And prediction without explanation is prophecy. Conventional pessimism is right that civilization has no guaranteed future, nor does our species. The overwhelming majority of civilizations and species that have ever existed are now extinct, including significantly every one of our cousin species, every species that has ever tried to survive by creating knowledge that was not in their genome, how to make clothes and fire and farming and to live the new ways of life that that enabled. That is our biological niche to survive through the exercise of creativity. And we are the last species left in that niche. For such species, stasis is not available. We conquer problems by creating knowledge, or they conquer us. So there's nothing new in our situation of all sorts of existential danger. It's undeniable that the worst can happen, because the very worst has already happened many times. All those civilizations who believed that their famines and droughts and disasters were divine punishment for their wickedness or whatever, in reality, it was just that they didn't know enough about irrigation, medicine, and so on. If the ancient Athenians had known about antibiotics or just about hygiene, they could have prevented the plague that contributed to the fall of their nascent optimistic society. And if they had, then as Carl Sagan speculated, we might now be at the stars. And technology would be regulating trivialities like the planetary climate as automatically as it's now regulating the temperature in this room. We know that's possible because of a momentous dichotomy that follows directly from the rejection of the supernatural. Namely, every transformation of physical systems that is not forbidden by laws of physics is achievable given the right knowledge. And hence, the rational attitude to the future is what I call optimism, the principle of optimism, namely that all evils are caused by lack of knowledge. That isn't a prophecy of success. It's an explanation for failure. If we fail at anything that's physically possible, it's because of some knowledge that we fail to create. Admittedly, some of the dangers that we currently foresee are themselves side effects of knowledge creation. But trying to slow that down won't help, because what do you slow down? In 1900, no one could possibly have foreseen that research in pure physics into the esoteric properties of the element uranium would, within 50 years, become the centerpiece of everyone's existential fear. Or that another half century later, the centerpiece would be carbon dioxide. In our future, too, the greatest dangers will inevitably be unforeseen. 
And the only type of knowledge that's capable of dealing with those is fundamental knowledge of universal regularities in nature. Any area of fundamental research could suddenly become essential to our survival. Biology, engineering. In World War II, pure mathematics was. We also need knowledge of how to structure human institutions to retain the miraculous property of keeping civilization stable under rapid change. Traditions of criticism and error correction. And we need wealth, meaning the ability to deploy technology in practice. And there's a final consideration. The world doesn't just contain optimists and pessimists and wise and unwise technology users. It contains enemies of civilization as well. And knowledge is impartial. It can be used for good or evil. But the enemies of civilization all necessarily have one thing in common. They are wrong. And so they fear error correction and truth. And that's why they resist changes in their ideas, which makes them less creative and slower to innovate. So our defense against the existential danger from malevolent uses of technology is speed. The good guys must use their only advantage to stay ahead. Mm -hmm.